Good afternoon. Welcome to the BACP Business Education Workshop webinar series. We have adapted our regular business education workshops here at City Hall into these webinars until further notice. I want to inform you that business licenses can be processed online by visiting chicagobusinessdirect.org. All BACP offices are open to the public. Please be advised that masks are required in all BACP facilities and six feet of social distancing must be maintained at all times. If you are a part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program, you can get credit for joining this webinar by sending an email to BACPoutreach at cityofchicago.org. I will put that email in the chat for your reference. If you want to learn more about this program, please visit chicago.gov forward slash business education. Also, you can also receive targeted emergency alerts for the business community by opting into Shy Biz Emergency Alert Alerts. If you are interested, please visit chicago.gov forward slash Shy Biz Alerts. We would like to encourage all attendees to ask questions. Please use the chat box and send your questions to all panelists. There will be a Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Today's webinar is entitled How to Open a Concession at O'Hare and Midway Airport presented by the Department of Aviation. At this time, I will now turn this webinar over to Horatio Watson for us to begin. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Glenn Rineski. I am the Assistant Commissioner Sessions Program at Airports, and I want to our car how to do business at the airports, which we label in such a way. Uh, you're going to hear from the entire CDA uh, concession staff on various topics. One thing I want to note is that in 2020 this year and going into 2022, we are going to have uh, an abundance of requests for proposals that are going to. So, uh, with this webinar, it's very timely information that we're going to share with you. And I want you to know the last slide of this presentation will be to the two active RFPs that we have currently out. Uh, one of them is with under the Chicago Department of Aviation, and it's for approximately uh, 10,000 square feet of area space for that Terminal 5 and Terminal due date is October 1st of this uh, October 1st at 4 p.m. And then there is an additional RFP out by Westfield for Terminal 5, which has locations in food and beverage, and that will be due October 13th. Hi, Glenn. Glenn, this is Stella with BACP. Sorry to interrupt, but you are coming through very choppy. Okay. Not too sure why that's happening. So where did I go choppy? Oh, first. I think it's square feet or something. Okay, can you hear me uh, better now? Oh yeah, that's so much better. Everyone else okay. that's better. Thank you. So I, I apologize for that. So um Welcome again uh, this afternoon. You're going to be, my name is Glenn Rineski. I'm the Assistant Commissioner for Concessions at O'Hare International Airport in, in Midway. You're going to be hearing from the staff of uh, the concessions team at O'Hare and Midway, and we're going to be presenting various topics on doing business at the airport. And this is a very timely uh, uh, webinar because this year we're very active with RFPs uh, that we have put out and we are going to be issuing more this year in 2021 and also in 2022. Uh, I just want to make note that the last slide in this presentation will have more information on two RFPs that are actively uh, current that you can still participate in. And one is for Terminal 5 and Terminal 3. Uh, it includes food and beverage, travel essentials and duty free uh, and retail. And that will be due October 1st at 4 p.m. 
there will be a link on that last slide, which you can activate the, uh, uh, the link for the RFP and additional information. And then there's also an, an active RFP that is put out by uh, Westfield, which is the master developer for Terminal 5. And they have additional space out for food and beverage. And that particular RFP will be October 13th at 12 at uh, 2 p.m. Central Time. Uh, another note is always to get timely updates on what we're doing as far as concessions RFPs. Go to our landing page at flychicago.com and at the bottom um, you can sign up for our web alerts. And uh, that will be the first issuance of any future RFPs and timely amendments. With that, I to up to Stelia Serna, who is the Deputy Commissioner of Concessions. Thank you, Glenn, for all that wonderful information. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Mayor Lori Lightfoot, Commissioner Reed, and the entire team at the Chicago Department of Education, I'm excited to be welcoming, welcoming you this afternoon to our Concessions 101 workshop webinar. I am Castalia Serna, Deputy Commissioner of Concessions and Concessions at the Chicago Department of Education, CDA, as we like to call it. The CDA and our concession operators have had a tremendous partnership over the years, and that relationship will be more instrumental in the months and years ahead as we hope to see travel, continue to travel rather, in the right direction. Chicago's airports have proven to be resilient, and we remain confident at the road ahead of us. Economic recovery and opportunities for our local small business community is what brings us here today. In response to COVID-19, we continue to be in coordination with our federal and local public health partners to keep our airports operational and safe. And it's an ongoing process. Passenger needs and expectations are changing as a result of the pandemic, and we have been listening and adapting. Through all of this, we remain a 24-7 operation and have provided uninterrupted concession offerings. We have implemented standard operating procedures for all concession operators to address cleanliness, social distancing, and face covering. We further adopted contactless payments and, we'll, and we will be bringing in online new businesses for our current RFP respondents to leverage mobile ordering, delivery, automated services, and micro offerings. This webinar is another step forward in preparing for the future. That future holds opportunity for you and all of the businesses and vendors in attendance today. In many ways, our concessionaires, many of whom are small, are small local and minority owned, are the backbone of our airport community, representing Chicago and employing tens of thousands of people. From Mayor Lori Lotfoot on down, we understand that our airports are economic engines, that we must invest in them. Those investments are catalysts for opportunities that touch every one of Chicago's 77 neighborhoods. From our restaurants and shops right up to the gates, our airports create first and lasting impressions of our wonderful city. While we navigate the remain poised on bringing job opportunities to our Chicago residents. We are committed to quality and inclusion with our concession contracts by focusing on diversity. And we are working diligently to bring new ideas and new 
school owners and operators into the field. I'm going to pass it on to my team. They are going to shine away. So I'll leave it at that. You'll be hearing from our rock stars, our rock star concessions team, starting with our concessions project administrators, Gracia Watson, Jim Holmick, Mark Wright, Michael Stein, and Russell Johnson. They put together an, an amazing team, as well as Yolanda Woodward, who is with our partner, Consulting. Thank you again for your interest in operating at O'Hare and Midway Airports. And with that, we shall take it away. Thank you, Castalia. And once again, good afternoon, everyone. Today, I will be providing a brief overview of airline operations at O'Hare Airport. O'Hare Airport. Standing by. O'Hare Airport is nearly 50. O'Hare Airport is served by nearly 50 of the world's leading airlines and is a major intra alliance connecting gateway including United Airlines and their Star Alliance partners, American Airlines with One World Partners, and Delta Airlines Sky Team. O'Hare also has multiple non-aligned airlines, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. Here's a fun fact for you. O'Hare is a dual hub for United and American Airlines. In 2019, there were over 105 million passengers that traveled through O'Hare and Midway airports. Of that, approximately 84 million passengers traveled from or through O'Hare. 2019 was a record setting year for O'Hare Airport, achieving the most operations in the U.S. with over 919,000 takeoffs and landings. That same year, Midway Airport has over 20 million passengers and over 232,000 takeoffs and landings. O'Hare and Midway International Airports provide direct and nonstop service to 275 cities around the world. Over 50% of O'Hare's passengers are connecting flights and never leave the terminal. What a captive audience. Here are a couple of fun facts for you. O'Hare is the only U.S. airport that has flights to six continents. O'Hare is the most connected airport in the U.S. and second in the world. Here's a big picture for you to look at. O'Hare has 191 active gates. Beginning in the upper left, we have Terminal 1, Terminal 2 in the lower left, Terminal 3 in the center and Terminal 5 to the lower right. Let's look at each of these terminals. Beginning with Terminal 1, Terminal 1 has two concourses, Concourse B and Concourse C. There were 14.6 million employments in Terminal 1. Major carriers are Lufthansa and United Airlines. Terminal 2 has two concourses. E and F. There were 6.7 million employments. Major carriers are at Canada, Delta, and United Airlines as well. Terminal 3 has four concourses from right to left. We have concourse G, H, K, and L as uh, to the far left. Terminal 3 has 17.4 million employments. Major carriers include Air Alaska. American Airlines, Iberia, Japan Airlines, and Spirit Airlines. Terminal 5 has just one concourse, Concourse M. Terminal 5 has a wide variety of international air carriers flying to six of the seven continents around the world. There were 3.4 million employments, with several major carriers include Aer Lingus, Alitalia, Emirates, Etihad. Finnair and Korean Air. Now I'd like to introduce Mark, who would like to talk to you about O'Hare Airport's concession program. Mike. 
Thank you, Horatio. Airport concessions at O'Hare and Midway are broken down into six categories. These categories in include food and beverage, specialty retail, news and gifts, services, duty free, and advertising. This next slide is a concessions performance breakdown by category for all terminals of O'Hare. Um, it lists the total number of stores per category, the area, which is the square footage, 2019 sales, and 2020 sales. As you can see, the pandemic in 2020 caused sales to uh, decrease a lot, but in 2021, travel habit has increased tremendously. This next slide represents terminals one, two, and three, and where each concession is located. Uh, there's a color coded legend there at the top left hand corner where you can gauge where each concession by category is located uh, in the terminal. One of the first things you may notice is the number of national brands such as um, McDonald's or, or Starbucks that are located just about in every terminal. The next slide is you will see some of the different brands and services located here at O'Hare. In Terminal 1, you have a couple of food and beverage locations, as well as a specialty retail location. Terminal 2, we'll also see some of the uh, food and beverage locations, as well as a specialty, as especially retail and a news and gift location here at the bottom of Hudson. Um, and in Terminal 3, you see food and beverage locations, service location, and you can see some of the indoor advertising that we had in having a food court TV. This next slide is Terminal 5. Terminal 5 was previously our international terminal, but has since added domestic flights, um, so we removed the designation of international from the name. Still see the color coded legend at the top right hand corner here, where you can gauge where each concession by category is located. Uh, the center is the arrival levels. Uh, you see McDonald's, the McDonald's, Clark, a couple other things. And on the left, towards the bottom, is the departure level concessions. This next slide shows a couple of the concessions inside. First slide is our checkpoint area and our duty free location. We'll go on to the next slide of our food court and other food and beverage locations. For the last um, slide with more food and beverage locations. This next slide is our multimodal facility, which was completed in November of 2018 houses all of our airport rental car operations and includes a public um, economy parking lot with approximately 2,600 um, parking spaces. Next slide shows uh, where our future concessions area will be located main for. Presenting next will be Project Administrator Russell Johnson to give some information on O'Hare 21. Thank you, Mark. O'Hare 21 is better known as ORD 21, signals the end of the O'Hare modernization, which configured our airfield to have six parallel runways on both sides of the airport. O'Hare 21 is the biggest enhancement for expansion of O'Hare Airport in 16. It will expand travel options to three peak capacity, 190 to We'll be reducing security wait time and improving screening and sorting of passenger baggage by replacing baggage. O'Hara 21 started with the L Stinger. Mark just talked about briefly. Top left hand corner of your screen it is five gates and currently designed for additional gates to that that time. The next part of O'Hara 21 Mark spoke about was the uh, multimodal facility or rental, rental car facility. We broke ground on T5 expansion in March 2019. This is a $1.2 billion investment, which will bring 350,000 square feet term five. We'll add 10 more gates 
and then we'll also renovate 750,000 square feet of existing buildings. This will increase by 75% concessions and passenger amenities, adding approximately 15 more concessions, improving immigration and customs. And the completion of the new gates, Delta Airline will move to Terminal 5 from Terminal 2. By Delta moving from Terminal 5 to Terminal 2, we will allow for Terminal 2 to be reconfigured by global terminal. In future phases of Terminal 5, we'll be also adding a parking garage, increased road improvements, and a hotel. So if you look at the concept you're drawing in front of you, you will see the outside of what the 10 new gates are being expanded on the east end of Terminal 5. What you won't see in this picture is the refurbished home of Delta Airlines on the west part of Terminal 5. The next picture shows you some of the open air amenities and, and gating locations, the 10 additional gates on the east corridor of Terminal 5 expansion. The next also shows you some of the amenities expansion, some of the seating configuration, configuration and enhanced passenger experiences will be found as a new Terminal 5 expansion. Once Terminal 5 is complete, then ORD 21 moves into the terminal area plan or track plan called Area, which includes Satellite 1, Satellite 2, and the Global Terminal. Two new satellites, S1 and S2, will be double in width of the current concessions corridor, O'Hara Airport. The building of these two satellites will allow the Global Terminal Project to move forward. O'Hara will not lose any gate capacity while Terminal 2 being rebuilt as a new global terminal. This endeavor is a 2.2 million square foot facility, one of the largest and cutting edge terminals in the nation. It will more than double the current size of Terminal 2. O'Hara's global terminal, the $2.2 billion investment of the $8.5 billion investment of O'Hara 21. While building the global terminal, a significant undertaking at no time will gate capacity be moved. At this time, I'd like to turn the program over to Drew Homick to talk more about Midway International Airport. Thank you very much, Russ. Um, as uh, Russell said, my name is Drew Homick with the Department of Aviation, uh, and I will discuss a little bit about Midway International Airport. Next slide. So Midway is one of the leading airports uh, for point-to-point -point contact service in the United States. And prior to COVID-19 in 2019, served uh, just south of 22 million passengers. Uh, we had five scheduled carriers serving about 79 destinations. Uh, the total number of carriers serving Midway has been stable post-COVID-19 period, while the destinations have actually increased. And in quarter two of 2021, Midway had direct flight scheduled to 17 U.S. destinations and 10 international destinations. Southwest Airlines represents over 90, about probably 95% of the capacity at Midway Airport. And as of July 2021, monthly passenger traffic throughout the TSA checkpoint is approximately 90% compared to 2019 volume. Next slide. Midway Airport, these are the, uh, the six major airlines. Um, Southwest, as we said, has the majority of uh, capacity and market share at Midway. And then we also have Delta, Volaris, North Country Sky, Allegiant, and Porter Airlines, which is currently suspended due to COVID-19. What we have here is a Midway Modernization Program, or MMP for short. And this is a $333 million program to invest uh, for nearly two, in more than two decades. And there are essentially three marquee programs that are part of this MMP. The passenger security checkpoint expansion, which is substantially complete. The terminal parking garage enhancements, which are enhancements to the uh, uh, escalators, elevators, um, automated parking as you exit also substantially complete. And then the third project is the concessions redevelopment program, which we'll go into more detail with right now. As a little bit of an overview about the airport lease and the program scope for the Midway concessions redevelopment, 
Midway Partnership, or MP for short, is a joint venture that was selected at the, as the developer and operator of Midway's concessions program following an RFP that came out in 2015 and was approved by city council in 2017. Midway Partnership is investing $75 million to renovate and expand all of the concessions, including food and beverage, news and gifts, specialty retail, and then other services and amenities. The program right now is currently boistering over 56% airport concessions disadvantaged business enterprise or ACDBE, which is the highest in the nation and is actually only increasing and only going up. We have plans to double the permanent jobs from 700, which it was when they took over the program in 2017 to more than 1400 employees at Midway Airport. The program's footprint will also double to over 70,000 square feet and increase the number of stores from 47 to over 70. We also introduced a concessions mobile food ordering service in, de in December. So this gives our travelers the opportunity to order ahead for either pickup at the restaurant, or you can also have it delivered to your gate for a fee. To date, we've constructed over 30 new concession units, which we'll take a look at at the next slide. Excuse me, we're actually going to talk a little bit about the sales on this slide. Uh, as we looked at the O'Hare ones, we're also kind of taking a look at the 2019 versus 2020 sales over at Midway. And as you can see, uh, food and beverage uh, is about 70 or so percent of the, um, uh, the sales that we have coming in in 2019 and 2020. News and gifts and specialty retail, which combined, we just consider retail. That's about 30 percent or so. Um, of the sales and then services is about another 1% and you can see obviously the difference um, due to the, the impacts of COVID between 2019 and 2020. Um, but as uh, Mark had said, we're starting to see those, those numbers steadily increase as people come out to, to, to travel more and more. And now going back a little bit to the projected redevelopment plan for the Midway Redevelopment Program, this shows about 60 to 70 of the locations that will be built out um, throughout the entire terminal. We got over on concourse a, um, the central market, which is right there in front of you. That's sort of the major hub when you walk right out of security. And then as you continue down concourse B. So, if we go to the next slide. These are all the locations that are currently built in new. So we have 30 new locations that have been built and we're featuring 22 brands that are new to the airport. Uh, we're really happy about this and 1 of the keys. That we try to bring into this new program is bringing a lot of the local small businesses, um, Chicago brands that people know and recognize into the airport. So those people who are traveling through that maybe don't have the opportunity to spend that much time in the city of Chicago can see and taste and buy some of the you know authentic Chicago feels um, that we have in our downtown and in our surrounding 77 uh, communities. Here are a couple of pictures that we have here. Uh, we have Sarah's Candies, which is a, a local um, confectionaire, also operates out of uh, O'Hare Airport. Uh, and then the, the top middle is our, our um, th this is actually a unique one because it used to be a moving walkway in the middle of a concourse, which was demolished. And then a, a long, narrow restaurant was built, and that's Harry Carey's. Um, top right corner is our Hudson News. Uh, this one was just opened about, uh, two months ago. And this one actually takes the Amazon just walk out technology. So essentially you put your credit card in and then you grab whatever you want and you just walk out and all of those items that you walk out with are charged to your credit card. Um, Midway airport is the only the second airport uh, in the United States that utilizes this technology and it's the biggest one. Um, so it, we were really excited about that. And then the bottom left is Hubbard Inn, which is a location that we have in downtown Chicago. Uh, Nuts on Clark, which has been a staple at Midway for many, many years. And then the bottom right is Arami, which is another local uh, restaurant that we have over by Ukrainian Village in Chicago. And with that, if anybody's looking for opportunities um, with uh, to partner at Midway Airport, Midway Partnership, once again, is a joint venture that operates all of the concessionaires. So I highly encourage you to visit that, that website there, midwaypartnership.com. And you'll see in there if there's anything that you want to be interested in as, as far as um, joining with Midway Partnership for Design and Construction, uh, suppliers or services, that would be the place to, to talk with them further. And with that, I'm going to send it over to my colleague, Michael Stein. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Stein. I'm a project administrator for CDA. 
and I'll be explaining to you the process to operate a concession here at the airport. Companies have several ways to operate a concession. Option one, you could operate it as a single operator. This is where you lease space directly from the airport. Option two is called a joint venture. This is where a company forms a partnership with another company to lease and operate a concession. Option three is where you operate as a subtenant. This is where your company leases from a larger concessionaire and operates as its sub tenant. Next, you need to determine how you would operate. Option one, you can operate under a franchise agreement with companies like McDonald's or Dunkin' Donuts. Option two, you can enter into a lease agreement with brands like Harry Carey or Publicans. Option three, you can operate as a regional or local company where you bring a neighborhood favorite like Nuts on Clark, Billy Grove Tavern, or Burger here to the airports. Lastly, you can operate as your own unique airport concept that only exists at the airport, like our ice bar or Cubs bar and grill. This next slide identifies the steps it takes to become a concessionaire. First, CDA identifies a location available for lease. Next, CDA will issue a request for proposal, also known as an RFP. Then respondents would prepare and properly submit their proposal. CDA will evaluate the responses and select a concessionaire. Then the selected concessionaire and CDA will finalize a lease agreement. From there, CDA must approve, uh, must get a, approval from city council. Once approved, the concessionaires will submit construction plans for review and approval by CDA. Then the concessionaire can complete construction and open for business at the airport. The goals of our concession program are to optimize re revenues at the airport and for the local economy, maximize ACBD, ACDDE participation, provide opportunities for local brands and local operators, provide high quality products and services, promote high quality facility designs, and also promote environmental sustainability, increase the variety of offerings at our airports, showcase the character of Chicago to the traveling public, and provide first-class customer service and provide fair pricing to the traveling public and to the employees who work at the airports. Things you need to consider when operating at the airport. You need to determine your hours of operation and schedule a team of employees properly. You must follow all the badging and security requirements at the airport. You need to consider how your employees will be getting to work so you have a stable workforce. Will they be using public transportation or will they be parking in the employee park lots for a cost? Finally, you need to think through your logistics to have the most efficient way to get your goods delivered and stored at the airport. Also, you have to think about how your waste and recyclables are going to re be removed effectively. Okay. And the next person up will be Yolanda Wood. Thank you so much. Next, we will talk about the elements of also. A response to a request for a proposal can be very detailed. As you can see from this extensive list of proposal elements, the cover letter should identify the RFP to which you are submitting a proposal. 
experience and qualifications should tell the story as to why you are qualified to operate a concession at O'Hare or Midway. Espousing your experience in the area you are proposing. So be sure to tell your story. Because the selection committee will pay close attention to the management plan, your development plan, your ACDBE participation plan, the references, your business information, financial statements when evaluating your submitted proposal. The selection committee wants to be certain that the proposal, uh, the proposed concession uh, has the wherewithal to operate in a high volume, fast paced airport environment. So what does that mean? The selection committee wants to make sure that those concessionaires that they are selecting to operate their business can actually withstand the high volume and the fast paced environment. So exceptions you see here on the list actually relate to specific items within the lease agreement that you can request to be changed, to be rephrased, or omitted, but not all things in the standard lease agreement are negotiable. Next, you'll see that the selection committee will go through your minimum qualifications. So the selection selection committee um, wants to see that the potential concession entrants meet the minimum qualifications. And at a minimum, the potential concession entrant must have a specific number of years of experience operating the concept in which they are proposing to operate at the airport with the minimum amount of average sales receipts during a specific period. This information is also used to gauge the potential concession entrant's ability to meet the capital improvement costs associated with operating a concession in an airport environment. And of course, the selection committee will also look closely at the ACDBE participation plan to ensure that CFR 49 part 23, which is regulated by the FAA, is met, has met the requirements and are meeting the goals. The ACDBE goal will be stated in the RFP and is required to be met in full or by demonstrating good faith efforts that the goal cannot be met. Next, we'll take a look at rent increase. This is an example of compensation to the city. Keep in mind that bids are not awarded to the highest bidder, and these fees are more than likely to be stated in the RFP, either as a range or as a set amount. The base rent rate per square foot will escalate at 3% each year. So, for example, if the base rent in 2021 is $50 per square foot, then the base rent in 2022 will be $50 plus $1.50, which is the 3% increase of $50, or it'll be $51.50 for 2022. The license fee is the greater of the percentage fee or the minimum annual guarantee fee. We will see an example in a later slide of how this works. The marketing fee is half a percentage of gross sales, and the central distribution fee for O'Hare will be determined based on facility costs. Uh, the central distribution at Midway is generally anywhere between 1 to 2% of gross sales. Uh, at this time, there's no distribution center at O'Hare, but it is under consideration. So, elements of a concession 
lease, the terms, and the percent rates. So here are the basic terms and fees associated with the multiple types of concepts that one can operate at the airport. The terms are specific to allow for the amortization of the build-out costs and over the estimated useful life of other improvements installed at build-out. As you see here, there is a range for the proposed percentage rent. Remember, the contract is not awarded to the highest bidder. So please keep in mind to adhere to the proposed rent ranges. Here is a slide that breaks it down based on session type. And here are those basic terms for each of the concessions categories. Once again, the terms are specific to allow for the amortization of the build out costs and over the estimated useful life of other improvements installed. Once again, keep in mind the range for the proposed percent rent uh, is what you must follow because the contract is not awarded to the highest bidder. The minimum annual guarantee versus the percentage fee. If you recall, it um, the license agreement states that it's the greater of the minimum guarantee fee or the percentage rent fee. So the minimum annual guarantee fee is usually set in the RFP and the percentage fee, as you saw earlier, is set at a range. So when making the decision on how much of your revenue you are willing to share, you must consider that if you make zero dollars, you still must pay the minimum annual guarantee and not the lesser of the percentage fee and the mag. Take for instance this example. If the percentage fee is less than the mag, the mag is due as payment. If you exceed the mag, then the greater amount is due as payment. So keep that in mind when you are creating your financial Performance for your business because you will have to pay this minimum annual guarantee. Consideration when determining your compensation. So, on average, depending on the term of the agreement, and that is specified in your lease uh, terms in the RFP. And it will also allow for that amortization of the cost of your build out. And it depends on your category. So you have to pay close attention to that because it is specified in the RFP. You also have to keep in mind that Cook County leasehold taxes will be due for the property that you are occupying at the airport. Utilities must be individually metered and brought to your space accordingly be it electric, be it gas, be it water. There is also the requirement of a security deposit, which is roughly about six months of your minimum annual guarantee. In the previous example, the minimum annual guarantee was $100,000. Therefore, the security deposit would be $50,000. And also, one thing to keep in mind is the cost of build out. And the term is going to allow for the amortization and the return of the cost of that build out, but the average cost is roughly about $1,000 per square feet. Also, the airports have developed a strict value pricing strategy that ensures pricing at the airports will not exceed the average prices charged in downtown Chicago. The airports have also developed a strict sustainability strategy that each concession operator must adopt and include in their day-to-day -day operations. Green initiatives include the reduction in the use of plastics and styrofoam, with those plastic and styrofoam products being replaced by green compostable items to ensure a healthy experience for the passenger, the employee, and the environment. 
we talked a little bit about the ACD participation plan. Now, as a firm is considered to be an ACDBE, it must meet the criteria of being 51% owned and managed by a socially and economically disadvantaged individual. The ACDBE goal is set in each RFP. An ACDBE plan must be included with the proposal. The ACDBE certified firm must be certified at the time the proposal is submitted or the proposal will be marked non-responsive. Now, if good faith efforts have not been demonstrated to achieve the ACDBE goal set in the RFP, it will also be marked non-responsive. So you must show good faith efforts of trying to meet the goal that's specified in the RFP, or you must submit an ACDBE participation plan that meets the goal set in the RFP. So the Airport Concessions Disadvantaged Business Program is subject to federal regulations and the goal is established in each request for proposal. The goal may be fulfilled by a concessionaire for several ways, including direct ownership, joint venture partnership, or subcontracts with ACDBEs through the purchases of goods and services from ACDBEs. And remember, this section of the proposal is pass or fail. So if your proposal does not meet that ACDBE goal, it will be deemed non-responsive. For more information about how to become certified, you can use these particular resources. Also, um, I believe the Department of Procurement Services has a session on how to be I'm certified, so you can find more information there. Uh, you can also find more information at the Illinois Department of Transportation's website. And also use the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection as a resource. So key information. For notifications regarding upcoming RFPs, please make sure that you sign up for the CDA web alerts. Lynn Wynowski mentioned that a lot of the information regarding the upcoming RFPs will be disseminated via those CDA web alerts. So please make sure to sign up. You can sign up at the flychicago.com website, lower right hand corner, click on CDA web alerts and sign up there. Proposals are typically due 90 days after posting, but be sure to sign up for those web alerts because there may be some variations in due dates, uh, as well as information regarding pre-proposal meetings and other deadlines. These are some additional resources um, uh, that are very helpful as it pertains to opening a concession at O'Hare or Midway International Airports. And also keep in mind that the airports are within the city of Chicago and the city of Chicago minimum wage ordinance is applicable. Once again, sign up for CA Web Arts for important information on how to become a concessionaire at O'Hare and Midway Airports. Next, we will have Castalia Sarna, Deputy Commissioner of Concessions to talk more about the RFPs that are upcoming. We have Glenn Rynowski who is going to talk more about these RFPs. So this is concluding our um, uh, false webinar for concessions 101 but uh, as I said at the top of the um, uh, the presentation 
These are two active RFPs that we currently have out. Uh, the first one is put out by the Chicago Department of Aviation, and uh, the due date is October 1st. This is for about 10,000 square feet of uh, food and beverage, retail, travel essentials. And the brunt of uh, the offering is going to be in the new Terminal 5 uh, extension, which was previewed in this presentation. And then also on the uh, west end of Terminal 5. And we're seeing a lot of activity in Terminal 5. as so we move forward with uh, the redevelopment of all the terminals. Uh, we're going to be placing Delta Airlines there a year, a year from now. Delta will fly out of Terminal 5. It currently flies out of Terminal 2. Uh, back in February, we uh, initiated uh, five flights uh, or five routes with Southwest Airlines. And now they're uh, very established at Terminal 5 with about 18 routes. So needless to say, Terminal 5 has a lot of passenger activity. And then the second point on this slide is um, Unibar Redamco Westfield, uh, better known, we refer to them as Westfield. They are the uh, master developer of the current T5 uh, concessions program there, and they have additional space coming online, and it's within food and beverage, and their RFP was uh, put out uh, about a month ago, and they have a due date of October 15th. And you can get more information at that particular. So, uh, 2021 uh, has a lot of opportunities. Like I said at the beginning, there will be more opportunities with additional RFPs going out this fall and then into 2022. So, uh, please sign up for the web alerts. And I hope that you this is very helpful and open it up for questions. Thank you. Some questions. What is the minimum sales in existing businesses? Is this number listed somewhere? Um, I don't. Can you clarify? Can, repeat the question one more time, please. What is the minimum sales in existing businesses? I believe they're talking about at either this airport. This is well. It depends on uh, it depends on the, in, in the airport industry. There's five categories. So you have food and beverage, news and gifts, duty free, retail and retail services, and then also advertising. But uh, I would it, it, it's we we have various um, units, various at O'Hare. We have about 225 units. Probably the smallest one is about 100 square feet, and we go up plus uh, over 3,000 square feet. So um, the, the the sales uh, vary. So I would say on a small unit, be conservative, uh, 100 square feet. Usually, you should be able to, do, or usually it trends, uh, and this is like 2019 sales figures. About twenty five hundred to two thousand dollars a day, conservatively. Um, now you know with um, the new COVID environment, we're ramping up. We're at about seventy four percent of originating passengers currently at O'Hare as compared to two thousand nineteen. So probably by twenty twenty two, we'll start seeing increased sales that will reflect two thousand nineteen uh, sales. But needless to say, I would say on the conservative side for food and beverage, uh, it would be about two thousand uh, dollars a day in sales, and uh, some of our uh, larger units will go as high as forty thousand uh, dollars a day in, in particular sales. So we're a twenty-four hour operation, um, and you know there is always heavy traffic uh, in front of. Basically, every uh, area. This is supposed to be a program for disadvantaged businesses. Are there any programs to make this more affordable? The fees and requirements seem unobtainable for small businesses. Uh, 
Well, there is, um, if, if you are a minority owned business and you team up with, there are various ways that you can uh, participate in the program. Uh, if you are a minority owned business and you're ACDBE certified and you are uh, a, a particular business that has goods and services, you can, um, you can have your particular um, items or uh, services or goods procured by someone who is actively doing uh, a concession at the airport or runs a concession at the airport. So um, there is like no entry fee to that. You would just be sort of augmenting your audience through the uh, through the needs of existing airport tenants who need ACDBE uh, participation. And if you're ACDBE certified and you have a specialty in a particular area for goods and services, there is uh, an, an entree there. Uh, also, uh, there is various ways in which you can team up with a, a J, as a JV partner, and there might be a capital initiation that you might not be able to uh, afford, which I could see might be uh, a little bit uh, strenuous on a small business. But you, there is uh, the FAA through the regulations has various workarounds where you can obtain an arm's length uh, loan from your principal partner. Possible for a new business that provides a service will be granted a lease, considering that they have strong financial backing. Well, that is one category that is graded or evaluated on. So strong financial backing, and if the particular service is the right fit and it fits the RFP, or if someone else can use your services, um, it's very viable. the rent a bit more is the rent based on is the rent is the base rent i'm sorry do as well as the mag percentage of the sales yes uh base rent is actually the cost of the square footage that the concession occupies so if you are occupying 100 square feet times the $50 base rent, then that is $5,000 for the year for the space in which you are occupying. The minimum annual guarantee fee is driven by the gross revenues. So that is where you really have to consider the financial position that you're in when you are bidding that minimum annual guarantee fee. You have to create a pro forma where you can project the sales that you will generate from that space. Usually in the RFP, there is the performance of the previous uh, concessionaire that was occupying that space, or there is some idea as to how much sales will be generated from that space. So based on that information, that data you will have to then determine how much of a minimum annual guarantee fee you want to pay the city of Chicago. Generally, it's stated as a firm amount in the RFP. The base rent itself is also stated as a firm amount in the RFP. However, the percent rent, which is a range in the RFP is weighted against the mag. It's the greater of the minimum, the mag, or the percent rent. So when you look at that example uh, in the in the presentation, it actually gives you an example of someone who does not exceed the mag, but they still must pay the mag. And then there's an example of someone who percent rent exceeds the mag, so they pay the greater amount. I hope that makes sense.
Now, Stella, I see a question here. How do you partner with these larger vendors to get exposure for your product? So when we issue an RFP, usually two weeks after the issuance of the RFP, we have an intake meeting for informational meeting. Um, and then uh, all the attendees would, uh, who attend that informational meeting, usually uh, the last few have been through their, uh, webinars. We make public that uh, list. And so you can go and um, solicit, you know, go through the list and try to find partners or viable uh, entities that you can team up with. Usually that's the best way, or it's a good starting point. Uh, also, if you're ACDBE, um, you're, you're listed on the City of Chicago procurement website uh, with your certification. So a lot of larger companies will go to to that list just to find uh, potential uh, partners. I don't see any more questions. Do you? No, I think that. That's it. So, thank you very much, everyone. Oh, and somebody just popped in something. How do you get your product in front of the actual airlines? So, um, we don't deal with the airlines. They are a stakeholder. They are a tenant. Uh, they have their own procurement process. So, the best way is, you know, maybe to go on their website and look for the, uh, the local office and see how they go. Uh, their processes are for procuring goods and services. Okay, so I guess that, that's it. Uh, I want to say thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for having us and good luck to everyone. And we hope to see you as a future concessionaire at O'Hare at Midway. Thank you everyone for joining in today. So again, please to our attendees, remember to sign up for Web Alerts at www flychicago.com for these opportunities. This is this now concludes the presentation how to open a concession at O'Hare and Midway International Airport. We would really really like to thank our partners at BACP for hosting this wonderful session today. On behalf of Mayor Lori Lightfoot, the Chicago Department of Aviation, Commissioner Jamie Ree, and the entire concession section we would like to thank you all for joining us this afternoon, and we most certainly hope it, this presentation was informative. Thanks again. Remember www.flychicago.com. Have a great afternoon. You are part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program and would like to receive credit for today's webinar. Please send us an email to BACP Outreach at City of Chicago. Org. Again, that's BACP Outreach at cityofchicago.org. Thank you.